These are the top crypto stories of the day. We have three key reasons why Bitcoin's crashing. We're going to identify the real reason. Also, SEC getting slapped down in court, going after a crypto company, and they were out of bounds. And then last but not least, what is better, Solana or Ethereum? Solana versus ETH Showdown. It's time to go around the blockchain. All right, and if uh, you're, sh I might need to show down this green hoodie. I know it's a little bright. I might have to change in the middle of the show, folks. But go ahead and hit that like button because we got three of the best guests in the history of all of YouTube. Sorry, that's just the facts. All right, we're going to go ahead and start in the green corner. We have Drew Wolfer holding it down. Drew, you're a Viking on the charts. You're a Viking just in this industry. How are you doing today? Man, it's all good. I got my blue light glasses on because I want to be able to see my hot wife for the rest of my life. Other than that, everything else is good. I'm going to have to steal that line. Also on today, stolen already, uh, we have Thinking Crypto, and he's always thinking crypto and thinking crypto. Can't wait to get your thoughts on this red day. How are you doing today? Nope, oh, you got muted there. It, the microphone was Holy red. Drew. Let's see. Can Holy you hear Drew. me now? All right, I'm back, baby. Um, look, I'm feeling great. We're in a bull market. The dips are for buying, not crying. Let's do this. All right. The only tears hitting my dips are my nacho and queso sauce on my table, but the tears are for a different reason. Then last but not least, we have Eric Carlson. Eric, how are you doing today? You're coming live from a, a ranch uh, from the undisclosed bunker. Um, are you building an underground bunker with some billionaires? Um, maybe. I cannot confirm nor deny any of those statements, uh, but coming to you from uh, beautiful. I'll, I'll let you know it's uh, Hualapai Mountain, if I can just uh, kind of swing this around here and you can see. So gorgeous place to be. Uh, just enjoying uh, this red day because I'm hoping to get some cash coming in soon and I can start buying this dip up before it uh, retraces back to uh, all time highs. All right. Enjoying nature. And I thought touching grass was just a meme. And so my mom would yell at me uh, as I huddled in the basement asking for more chicken tenders. But let's go ahead and get to the first story here, which is Bitcoin. Uh, let's just share my screen here. I want to share the price and I'm going to roll into the article. You can see right here, we are experiencing quite the correction. I'm going to uh, fix this uh, ratio size real quick. There we go. And yeah, right now we are flirting uh, with the $64,000 level, quite the steep decline from earlier today. 68 k uh, it was sitting at, and now we've seen just a sharp, sharp correction, 3.8%. If I go ahead and hit refresh, now above 4%, a 4% pullback. But there's been uh, three reasons identified. Why is the crypto market down? We're going to look at just the three and get the thoughts here. ETFs, daily outflow for number one. Number two, we're just overbought, y'all. It's just overbought on the RSI. That's number two. And then number three, we have the longs getting liquidated, leveraged traders losing their shirts out there. All right. Well, Drew, we got ETFs, RSI, the longs. What to you is enemy number one and why we're seeing such a red candle today? Dude, that's a tough question. Which one's enemy number one? I would say... <sighs> ETF outflows, man, because whenever people are in profits, they're because of the ETF, it makes it super liquid and it makes it super easy to get in and out with those shares. Right. So that's almost like a double edged sword. Yeah, it's really easy for people to get in, but it's also really easy for people to get out. Right. So if people need to be liquid somewhere, they're going to be in what most people in the world would call the speculative asset class. That's where they're going to start offloading. They're not going to offload their real estate properties. They're not going to offload their Apple shares. They're not going to go and sell their gold. It takes forever to do that stuff. Sell the ETF shares, man. So I think that's enemy number one is whenever they're uh, selling off the ETF shares. But I will say, this is what healthy markets do. You know, you go up, you, you, get, you get above previous resistance levels. You got to retrace eventually, man. You got to go back down and, and test those um, previous resistance levels and make them turn them into supports. That's just what healthy markets do. Healthy markets. All right. Well, thinking crypto, I want to get your thoughts on this. And a shout out to Crypto Billy, member for 13 months, greatest minds on YouTube, givers gain. I, I love that message. I love the positivity. All right. Thinking crypto, you know, he's saying enemy number one is the ETF. I, I did a little research here. We got about $150 million in outflows, just net total for the ETFs just yesterday. So $150 million left the ETF market. 
Is that the number one reason? And should we be concerned with yesterday's outflows? I don't think it's a number one culprit. I think the number one is the overbought scenario. I thought Bitcoin was actually going to correct the way it's correcting right now at the 618 using the Fibonacci model. That would have put us right over 48,000. It didn't. The ETF buying shot us through to new all time highs at about 74,000. So we were long overdue for this type of pullback. And I know the uber bullish people are going to say, dude, the ETFs, bro. And, you know, they're going to get upset. But in order for us to hit six figures and to keep going higher, market cycles have to play out. The principles have to play out. It doesn't matter how emotional you are. They have to pull back, build the support levels, bounce on them, and keep going to higher prices. So this is your normal cool down after an epic run up. If you think about what happened in 2023 and then the first few months of this year. So a, a well needed cool down, dip, don't cry, buy, and hold on for higher highs. All right, holding on for higher highs. And Eric, I mean, you're out in the wilderness. You're you're exploring nature right now. I got to think with that type of mentality, you got a long-term mindset. Uh, what what are your thoughts with, you know, whether it's the ETF, whether it's we're overbought, you know, we get, we did get a sharp correction. We haven't seen 20% yet. You know, we're still floating between 10 and 15% drawdown. Would you short this market? Is there more pain to come? I would most certainly not short in a bull market. Uh, at least not for any long period of time. I mean, sure, you could have looked at the all-time highs being broken and we pushed through then 72, 73, then almost 74. Like if you put it in a short up at the top, yeah, sure, get that. It came back down pretty quickly to the 69 area. Take your profit, get out of that short because as the ETFs have shown, it's just going to keep on having buying pressure with the exception of you know, yesterday where we finally had, you know, 150 million or 165 million, whatever it was in outflows. And we really only dropped another 4% from the little bit of pullback that we had. I mean, I remember last cycle having, you know, a shoot up to 42,000 when Elon was buying uh, a bunch of uh, Bitcoin. And then next thing you know, it went back down to 32,000. You know, we had a basically a 10,000, you know, three day candle when it was at half the price it is now. So that was a lot more scary. And then when we ripped up even higher to 58, then we go down and it was, you know, then 48 and then back up to, to 59 and then down to 49 again. Like it was just all up and down in that first half of uh, 2021. And that was, that was real volatility. What we have now is baby volatility. And that baby volatility to me just says, hey, the, the demand pressure is still there. You know, we're always going to have some selling pressure as the price increases. Yeah, people get to their magic number that they want to take some profits and that's going to happen. And then GBTC has just been on the gas pedal with their sales. And that's been kind of suppressing that that price jump. But we're in a bull market, baby. It's going up. It really is just going up. It's just a matter of time. And I wouldn't be shorting this market. Yeah, people forget how volatile H1 uh, 2021 quite was. And I, I mean, do you remember the t uh, Elon Tesla tweet where they're like, we no longer accept Bitcoin. I think it was about twenty thousand yeah. dollars, or yeah, very, very quickly. Uh, C ninety has a question, Eric. Real quickly, what kind of mic setup is Eric using? Audio is great while being outside. Go ahead. Well, what are you using? It does sound good. Literally, just my uh, my computer. I just have the uh, the settings um, turned uh, down a little bit for uh, outside. It's uh, got a dual mic system, so it tries to get rid of some of the wind sound that you might hear every now and again. But it's just my uh, my Dell computer mic. And uh, his Dell computer mic is connected to a AI powered robot from Tesla and is standing uh, eye to eye level. That's why it looks like that. Uh, one more question I want to uh, throw to Drew Wolfer here. Chemistry bro brought up a good point, Drew. Of the outflows, 650 million of that was grayscale. So with 150 net outflow, that means there is $500 million still buying pressure, uh, you know, on top of the 650 selling pressure. Are we focusing too hard on the selling and not highlighting the buying enough? Yeah, I think we also need to focus on the fact that there's, for lack of a better word, a shit ton of people that are in profit. Like really, really big profits. People that bought at 25, 30, 40, 45, 50. Like those people are in massive profits right there, right now. And those people aren't even involved in the ETF. So the ETFs are for people that don't want to buy Bitcoin. Right. This is for new money that people aren't going to bring it in on a centralized exchange or try to buy stuff on a DEX or hold it in their ledger or their MetaMask or whatever it may be. They don't want to custody any of that stuff. They want to just 
buy an ETF share and say, hey, I, you know, I, I kind of own a little bit of Bitcoin, right? So my bias is that a lot of that downward sell pressure is just going to be a lot of people that are taking profits, even institutions that are taking profits on those positions because they let the big boys come in and pump their bags, right? And I'm not saying that retail is going to be able to take down and counteract the big boys buying things up. But, you know, if the the big institutions kind of lay off the buys, right? And they're also aiding in the selling from Grayscale's perspective, then yeah, you can see that kind of trickle down into uh, a little bit higher of a, a dip, you know, but like, like he was saying, man, it's baby volatility comparatively. Baby volatility. It is nothing yet. And uh, our producer just revealed the secret to Eric's uh, audio. Eric's green screen Folks, it's a green screen. He's not even outside. There's a boom mic like right there, everyone. Come on, wake up, sheeple. Uh, we kid, we kid. All right, let's talk about the SEC, everyone. The SEC won't let debt box be. If I could just share the screen real quick. This, uh, this article does a pretty good job assessing it. Uh, SEC is hit with sanctions for its gross abuse of power. When we scroll down here, the judge slammed the SEC for intentionally lying to the court about evidence it obtained to secure a restraining order and the critical evidence they offered lacked any basis, which was advanced in a deliberately false and misleading way. This isn't the, uh, you know, the opposition lawyer. No, this is the judge. And we scroll down here. It was, uh, they basically alleged that they had sent 720 K overseas and then would flee to the UAE. Well, after they actually did a little research, the sec misrepresented the evidence that money was actually sent within the U.S. So they're just lying through their teeth. Uh, and then just the judge slapping them down, SEC overstepping their bounds uh, regarding this debt box deal. Now, I want to ask you, thinking crypto, I, I couldn't help but think this is reminding me of other court cases we've seen where, oh, if you get caught doing this bad thing, huge, huge fine. But if you just destroy evidence, then it, then it's a slap in the wrist, right? Is this a strategy to just for the SEC to just overreach, overreach, lie to the court, and then if they're caught, they just get a wrist slap? Or do you think they're actually making genuine mistakes? No, I think this is overreach. And this is why I call Gary Genser a scumbag regulator. We're dealing Ooh. with someone here who has no allegiance to the law. And just don't take my word for it. In the grayscale lawsuit, the judges said the SEC acted arbitrary and capricious. In the Ripple lawsuit, uh, one of the judges, Sarah Netburn, said the SEC lacks faithful allegiance to the law. So the people who are supposed to uphold the law themselves don't care about it. They're breaking it. And they don't, I mean, they will outright lie to the judge and the court, right? And that's why the judge was like, what are you guys doing? And, and then he sanctioned them. Uh, so it's unbelievable what's happening. But this is all good in a way uh, because it will give Congress more ammo to take action against the SEC. And look, the Democrats are in power and Elizabeth Warren is the anti-crypto army leader. She's backing uh, Gary Genser. So the Republicans can't really do much from the House Financial Services Committee, but they can reduce his budget. And he put out his budget request yesterday. And this is why we got to keep fighting. The industry is putting together the super PAC funds. They're going out and filing amicus briefs on behalf of different companies uh, like Coinbase and Kraken and so forth. And we got to take off the gloves. And I'm glad the industry is counter suing because you're dealing once again with someone who's a scumbag and doesn't respect the law. Doesn't respect the law. I think that's just a, a great assessment right there. Uh, someone, uh, Crypto Billy, that's a Magnum PI stash. Well, I, I got to start combing this thing in. You know, I got to think it's, it's just the Mexa stash. It is in my DNA. The hair here will outgrow the rest of my face and obviously the top of my head. All right. Uh, now, Eric Carlson. I want to just ask you, you know, do you, what are your thoughts? Are they operating in good faith? You know, cryptos, there's a lot to understand. There's, you know, different chains. What, what that transaction do? I, heck, I don't know. Or is this, you know, kind of what Tony's saying? Do you agree they're just lying through their teeth and they're acting as a scumbag regulator? They are absolutely lying. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade here. You know, they're a government entity. And when was the last time you could trust your government to give you a straight answer about anything? uh decades like smoky the bear eisenhower. <laughs> maybe probably or probably eisenhower was the last genuine president we had who told it like it was and warned you about the military industrial complex you know so yeah they what the sec is doing is exactly 
they're taking a play out of their own playbook, like from what they do with the uh, people that they supposedly regulate. Oh, yeah, you can break the rules and we're going to fine you a hefty fine after you've made 10 times what your hefty fine is. So, yeah, they're trying to do the exact same thing like, oh, well, we didn't know we you know, made a mistake. And then they're going to try and pay just a little bit on the side. But luckily enough, they were too stupid to really do these kinds of things when crypto was in its you know, total infancy. Now, you know, crypto is a teenager, at least Bitcoin's a teenager, and it's going to be defiant. And they have enough money behind these crypto industries, you know, the different niches of crypto industry. They all have enough money to fight this thing. And luckily enough, they're doing that and they're going to take it to the SEC. And Gary better be, you know, looking out for his job and he better start, you know, playing ball with these crypto guys or else he's going to not only lose his current job, he's not going to be up for his uh, glorious banking job that he's shooting for, too. So, no, I, I like that assessment. Crypto, you know, as an infant could have been, you know, unalived in the in the crib. Right. You know, it's it's uh, easy to take mm-hmm. down. I've never punched an infant, but I, I imagine the, the the physical recourse coming back my way is pretty diminished. Right. Uh, versus now. Now it's a teenager. It has the power to, to slam the door, say, F you, dad, F you, mom. You know, I'm, I'm not you know, I'm, I'm going to sneak out the window at night. So no, I, I, I like that. Steal those car keys and go off to the party. Oh, it's definitely stealing the car keys eventually. All right. Well, I have uh, one more. Uh, I want to share a quote here for Drew. Now, Drew, this is from a consultant. His name's Austin Campbell. You look like you'd be named Austin Campbell, by the way, Drew. But uh, he said the SEC staffed involved should be terminated and that the agency needs to go a reform. Is that too much? Should we fire the entire agency or what would you do if you're in charge? Dude, that's tough because like it's I mean, it's like the devil you do know or the devil you don't. Right. Like, do you keep the people in and just try to like train them and teach them? Hey, don't do this. Or do you bring new people in and try to train them and teach them? Hey, don't do this because, you know, you don't know how they're going to react either. I do. I do want to say, though, this is kind of what sucks about our judicial system is that there's ways that. Okay, because let's be real, like Debtbox, if you if anybody knows anything about Debtbox, I did a, a video on Debtbox, okay, and it's it was just f- fake notes. That's all it was. It was the same thing as like Strongblock and, and Thor and all these fake nodes where it was like, you know, all this stuff, right? So it was essentially basically a Ponzi scheme. You know, you are the yield for the next guy or for the people that came before you. So the SEC has now dropped the ball when they could have just said, yo, you guys are a Ponzi scheme. Like we're shutting this down. Instead, they, they did something that absolutely made them have to throw out the entire case because they made a mistake saying, oh, these guys are trying to flee the country when they couldn't prove it, which is kind of like short-sighted in my opinion, when they could have cited like a dozen other things that these guys were doing. Um, man, it's just, it's kind of what sucks about the judicial system is whenever they get caught doing something like this, kind of just taking that easier approach saying like, Oh, let's just, uh, let's just freeze all their assets and stuff. It's like, man, I don't think you needed to do that. I think, you know, really they, they weren't trying to flee. So yeah, I think maybe you're going to need to at the very least train some people better to like pick out what a Ponzi scheme is. Uh, go watch the Drew Wolf for YouTube channel. If you want to know what a Ponzi scheme is, I've talked about hundreds of them and they've all plummeted to oblivion. And we have the link down below. And yeah, if you want to talk about freezing transactions, uh, what is this Coinbase when Bitcoin's at an all time high? I don't think so. All right, well, let's uh, move forward. I know that was a cheap shot. All right, uh, let's move. Last topic, Solana versus Ethereum. Who do you have? Let me know in the chat. Well, Arthur Hayes, old Bitcoin uh, whale here. He has some takes here. Solana, a better version of Ethereum. A couple points for Solana. Solana search interest on Google Trends has surpassed Ethereum. Also, Solana has flipped BNB. BNB was the next crypto after Tether, aka the next real crypto after Ethereum. So Solana getting really close. And oh, wow, look at that. It's actually battling back and forth. It looks like uh, they're deviating uh, yes, yeah, Solana is down 10%. BNB is only down 5 So BNB has flipped it again. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, 1.4 Ethereum. But one last thing I want to share. He, he highlighted Solana's UX and UI as the best in the ecosystem, easy to use. And he believes these conditions could make Solana the best performer this cycle. 
think in crypto. You've probably been watching or looking at listening to Arthur Hayes for a while now. Do you think there, there's a criticism thrown his way that he just pumps his own bags? Is that the case here? I think so. Look, everybody talks their own bags, though, right? They already their book, right? So Cardano. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here's the thing. I hold both. I hold both Ethereum and Solana. Uh, look, Solana is being uh, performing incredibly well. I do believe there's a lot of VCs behind it, and they're looking to unload. But you know, as far as the true tested blockchain out of the two, it's Ethereum that's been around for so long, getting enterprise adoption, not just meme coins, right? But with true enterprise adoption. I mean, just look at PayPal launching their stablecoin on Ethereum. And look, there's also going to be competition. Uh, and we see this in other industries and markets. In the tech uh, web 1.0, there was Google and, and AOL and MSN and Bing and, and so forth, right? And so there's going to be multiple players, but I think Ethereum has the adoption, it has the reputation, it has the history. And I'm going to say Ethereum, but um, you know, from, from an adoption standpoint, from a price standpoint, Solana could outperform, but I hold both, so I'm rooting for both. Yeah, same. I hold both, rooting for both. I've uh, been buying NFTs on both chains for years and years, and you know, don't plan on leaving either chain anytime soon. All right, well, Eric Carlson, I know you're standing. I hope your robot can uh, catch you if you fall down, because you might fall down after hearing this. Here's a quote from Arthur. Solana is a better version of ETH. I disagree, but that's what they believe. It could trade to 5K to 10K in this cycle. So buying it around 150 now is a great asymmetric risk profile. What are your thoughts of that bold assessment there? 5 to 10K Solana. I mean, is that really doable? No, not a chance. Now, and, you know, I've been on the show before and I've kind of downplayed Solana in the past. And uh, actually, very recently, I kind of switched up uh, my take on Solana and it really has community being very, very strong. I think that community has been so strong with Solana that it has kind of kept it alive through its problems that it's had. Um, now, I still don't like the chain particularly, uh, but I did buy a small bag uh, right under 150. So I'm right in the, uh, you know, in the camp with this guy, except only I don't believe it's going to 5,000, 10,000. You know, when it comes to Solana, what's, you know, is it better than Ethereum? In some regards, it could be. It's faster and it's cheaper. So for retail, it's going to be better. And what's retail going to do? They're going to buy NFTs and they're going to hop into meme coins, which is exactly what we just saw. And that's what drove Solana's price action so heavy. Retail was like, oh, I missed the boat on Bitcoin. It's already at new all time highs. And Ethereum, you know, it's expensive. And every time I try and transact on it, I get a huge, you know, $100 gas fee. So everyone's flocking to Solana right now. And it's also just happens to be where all the DGENs have been playing with the meme coins and the NFTs, and it really took off. But, you know, how long can that last? I don't know how sustainable it is. And as volume increases, we've seen outages on Solana. So if the bull run is in full swing and we start having outages, if you're using it for meme coins and NFTs, OK, an outage isn't necessarily going to crush you. But if you're an enterprise, if you're a business trying to operate and have a dApp built on top of a blockchain, it's going to be Ethereum or Cardano. It's not going to be Solana that you can't trust. So, you know, I think maybe 750 to 1,000 for Solana makes sense, not 5,000, not 10,000. All right. And uh, yeah, chat coming in 1K, 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 1K. And we saw 1,200. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm really liking some sell areas around the 8, 900 area. Uh, let's see. Buy dips, baby. fade rips. Or go ahead. I said 750, baby. 750. Sell that soul at 750. I don't think you'll be too upset if you uh, end up doing that. You'll be able to get in a little bit cheaper, I'm sure, two years later. Uh, buy divs, fade rips. Damn, 2x speed on this podcast to catch up is intense. Well, what do you hear this in his own? I'm talking even faster. What do you even believe is happening? All right. Uh, all right. Last question here for Drew. Share my screen. I, I wanted to highlight something. This is something I've, I pointed out in the past, but I haven't done it in a few months. So let's do the new math. All right. So this is Solana over the past, oh, geez, over the past year, started $22. Right now, around 180. So we're looking pretty close to a 9x over the last 12 months. ETH, 2. 2x, and it's actually not even that. 1,700, and at 3,400, we had a, around a 2x. So less than a 2x. So we go to 8x plus to 1.9x. Will Over the next 12 months, what do you think is going to be the better performer? Can Solana continue to beat Ethereum? 
Yeah, uh, I, I want to just make one point really quick. Cause I, there, we lose this in the market in crypto because people have like this moon boy mentality. $5,000 Solana is a 30X from here. It would put it at a 2.5, almost 2.5 trillion dollar market cap by itself, as big as Apple, right? As bi- Almost as big as Apple. We'll put it like that. That's how much the entire crypto market is worth all encompassing right now, every crypto. It's worth 2.5 trillion. So Solana is going to be bigger than all of crypto. Mm, I don't know about all that. But my, so my bias is that Ethereum is going to outperform Solana in terms of actual adoption. Okay. And the reason is because of all of their enterprise grade partnerships and people, you know, institutions building on Ethereum. And it's so well established as, you know, 20 chains built on it. Right. So I see Ethereum going, this is just my opinion, and I think it's going to hit 10K no problem and do in large part because I am of the volition that the ETF is going to be approved. Now, even if Ethereum does hit $10,000, it's only a two and a half X from here. So honestly, from where the prices stand right now, potentially Solana might edge it out, okay? And I think Solana performs better if the ETFs don't get approved for Ethereum. But my guess is probably going to be neck and neck because Solana has been on a, on a rager, dude. It's been on a rager. So it's, I mean, it's already almost up to its all time high um, just within the past few days until we got this dump today. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, actually important point, it actually has hit all time highs in market cap. And if we look at market cap, you can see we've actually exceeded previous uh, bull top there. Uh, November 2021. So uh, Solana as a protocol, never been more value, valuable, even if your price for your token still quite hasn't hit 250. Seems like 250 is, you know, 250 is FUD for sure. But uh, folks, that is all the time we have for today. Uh, I think I got to throw it to Eric for the final word. One, you're just outside. Your microphone's just working so beautifully. And I want to zoom in to determine, are you actually in a basement? And this is green screen. But uh, Eric, feel free, uh, leave the audience with some parting thoughts. I think we had a pretty good episode. So hit that like button if you agree. Listen, guys, uh, if you're not already subscribed to the other uh, guys on the channel, you know, go subscribe to them because they're all fantastic. They were throwing out the heat today. Um, I agree with pretty much everything that they all said. Um, but uh, you know. Things are getting fun. It's a bull run. So, uh, you know, try and keep your head on straight. You know, uh, something that I like to do to uh, try and make sure I'm not getting too crazy with FOMO as prices start rising is start planning an exit strategy. Um, And that's for all your bags and uh, making sure that you have some that you probably don't sell. You should have a don't sell bag, Uh, but start developing, you know, a DCA out strategy um, as things get exciting over the next year to year and a half. All right. And uh, clearly a green screen, C90. Uh, it's an impressive 100K lumen light to create those shadows. So uh, yeah, look, we know you're in, uh, this is the Truman Show, folks. He's just in a giant dome. I thought it was a basement. It's a dome. No, that is Eagle Pass. I, I knew it was. All right, well, folks, that's all we got time for. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out and make sure you go follow all the guests down below. We specifically put their link so you can go follow. Make sure you follow. We want them to be the most followed crypto experts in the entire universe. And that's all I got for you. See you folks tomorrow.